Welcome back to our Jerusalem studio at InfoLive TV for our weekly debate. With me, Gerald Kessel, Senior Political Analyst, and Yoni Ben Menachem, Director General of Israel Radio. Our topic for today, Syria. Gerald, it was reported Wednesday that Israel confirmed the existence of a third party relaying messages between Israel and uh, Syria. First off, who do you think it is? And secondly, what, in your opinion, what are the chances of resumption of direct and overt talks between Israel and Syria, taking into account that the Syrians are demanding some sort of uh, something similar to what they say Rabin gave them in 1995? As far as we understand, and I think it's pretty sure that the third party or the intermediary, the go between of the um, of the Turks, uh, the Turkish uh, government of uh, uh, Tayyip Erdogan has long been trying to play a more significant role in the uh, in the uh, Middle East, in the Arab-Israel conflict, and uh, would uh, be pleased to uh, have their status uh, upgraded. Israel's not all that keen, but p possibly would go along if it saw interest in uh, the uh, unveiling of a, uh, a new avenue of talks between uh, Damascus and Jerusalem. Um, and quite frankly, I'm a little bit surprised that Israel hasn't taken President Assad up on his offer, at least to, uh, to, to throw it back into his court and to, uh, to say this is something that, yes, we'd like to investigate. It seems that Israel has no interest in the status quo. Uh, being preserved, but would uh, would look would need to look for avenues to uh, change the status quo in terms of its own national interest. Prime Minister Ormet has sent many uh, secret messages to the Syrians, and uh, uh, the last intervention of the Turkish uh, foreign minister is uh, is very effective, and uh, we can see it by the speech of uh, President Assad, uh, who didn't mention his name, but he was relating to it very seriously. Uh, and this is a very good development. The question is, the basic question is, what is the what is going to be the outcome of these uh, messages or negotiations, secret negotiations? Um, first of all, it's good because uh, as a result of what is happening, I think that the danger for uh, a war between Israel and Syria. Uh, in this summer, you know, there were many press reports about uh, such a possibility. Uh, these uh, chances are lowering now, and I think uh, it's easing uh, or diffusing the tension between Israel and Syria. So this is a, a very positive development. The, the question, the real question is, with, is President Assad really interested in peace, or, or, or his speech, or what he said was just a rhetoric of, of peace? Um, we don't have any evidence that he is really interested uh, in, in going into um, serious negotiations with Israel like his father did in, uh, in the last round of talks in Shepherdstown five or six years ago. And we have to see the fact that he's coming out publicly and demanding that Israel will commit in, in writing that uh, Israel is willing to give him the, all of the Golan Heights is something which is unacceptable in negotiations. And you cannot put conditions, preconditions, before uh, the starting of the negotiation. What is needed is that he will announce that he's willing to go back to the negotiation table and Israel will do the same. And there, on the negotiating table, they will negotiate and, and solve the problems and not uh, through the media. The axis of evil, the so-called axis of evil, President Ahmadinejad of Iran is, as we speak, in, in Syria on an official visit. Uh, this relates to what Yoni just spoke about. Do you think Assad's overtures, peace overtures, are merely a smokescreen to alleviate some of the Western pressure on Syria? Or is he genuinely interested in reproachment with the West and peace with Israel? I think Israel should be testing, and so should the United States be testing Assad at his word. Exactly that. It could well be that Assad's real interest is to get the Americans, get the West off, off his back, especially in terms of the uh, uh, investigation into the Hariri assassination in, in Lebanon and the implication that Syria may have been, might have been involved in that. But the, the, the thing that Israel needs to do, if Israel decides that it's in its national interest, a settlement, 
a peace settlement with Syria is in its national interest, it should do everything possible to try to reach that to reach that goal, and not to say, well, it's unacceptable. This is a, a, a term that's unacceptable, and and kill it off at the start. Israel has to establish what is its national interest uh, in terms of relations with Syria. Is it? taking Syria out of the axis of evil, the so-called axis of evil, uh, and trying to bring Syria into a different kind of uh, a realm as, let's say, you, you have peace with Egypt. Uh, even if peace with Syria was in that realm, wouldn't that not be in, in Israel's interest? Would it not be indeed in Israel's interest to set a counter precondition, as Assad has, has set for the return of the whole Golan and say, show us how you are withdrawing your support from Hezbollah. Israel, that, that is the fundamental, a fundamental interest at this stage in Israel's uh, overall strategic array. Divorcing Syria from Iran, Hezbollah, and also, in a way, neutralizing Hezbollah and neutralizing the Syrian, ongoing Syrian support of Hezbollah. His, uh, Syria can't have it both ways. Israel should be testing Syria to make sure which way it is it's intending to go. On the backdrop of the Shiite, the widening Shiite-Sunni rift in the Middle East, what part do you think Assad's Alawite religious affiliation plays in his connection with Iran? There's no doubt that uh, Assad, I don't think it's a religious problem, um, because uh, Assad is uh, more interested in the alliance with the Iranians and with the um, with Hezbollah, um, not because they are Shiites, but because they have a lot of power in the region, and uh, they're anti-Americans and anti-Israelis, and uh, this is the way he's going. Um, I think it will be very difficult for Assad to divorce himself from uh, Iran and the Hezbollah, and this is not, this is not actually what is important for Israel. I think more, what's more important for Israel is that uh, we will know that there will be uh, such security arrangements on the Golan Heights that will ensure the safety of Israel. Uh, uh, this is one aspect of what is needed from the Syrian. The other aspect is the uh, normalization between Israel and Syria, that it will be a real peace, uh, not a cold peace like the peace we have with Egypt. Um, and this is the real test of Assad. Um, I think that the Israeli demand that he will divorce himself from the axis from with the, the Iranians and the Hezbollah is not uh, practical and not relevant because he will never do that. Gerald, uh, divorce or the continuation of this marriage of convenience? I think the I think the key question is not just diffusing tensions. I think the time has come. We've been we're living with diffusing of tensions for you know 40 years in a sense uh, since since 1967. In other words, what I'm saying is it's not enough just to be dampening down tension, saying, okay, we'll look to, to peace talks. We've been into that, uh, that realm for a long time. There needs to be a more dramatic uh, uh, change of, uh, of mindset in, in Israeli strategic thinking to say, this is what is the Israeli national interest. The Israeli national interest is to diffuse tensions long time, not just to, to diffuse true, tensions uh, temporarily. This is true, but I think the, um, what should be uh, decided first is whether Israel wants to go on the Israeli-Palestinian track or on the Israeli-Syrian track, because we know the, from our past experience when uh, Ehud Barak was prime minister that Israel could not negotiate at the same time on both tracks. Why not? Because it failed, because the, you need a, st a strong leadership in Israel, a strong government to do that, which we don't have now. Um, and you have to make a lot of concessions on both tracks, and this is very difficult for the Israeli public to accept. I think that the, um, this is the right timing for the Israeli-Syrian track, because on the Palestinian-Israeli track there is no hope because of what happened in Gaza. So if we want to be practical, let's concentrate on the, on the Israeli-Syrian track. There, maybe there is a chance. I think uh, Yon is absolutely right about the complications of uh, negotiating simultaneously for absolute uh, peace, uh, peace uh, arrangements in, uh, uh, on two fronts, Syria and the Syrian and the Palestinian. Israel's security, fundamental security, national security interests are best served by a mindset change which would have to take into account the, the Israeli public's attitude. In other words, Preparing the Israeli public and changing the Israeli public attitude, not 
on whether this this border will be changed or they will have to move back 10 kilometers or whether the border with Syria will be on, on these line or on that line uh, and so forth, but on the concept of Israel relating to the whole, the, 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 the future conflict uh, with, the, with the entire Arab world. What I'm saying then is that there should be a much more adventurous response to what was conceived by the, uh, in, in the, what's the so-called Saudi plan of the Arab League of saying this is the time to set the parameters for changing uh, the relationship between Israel and the Arab world. You spoke of a change of mindset, taking into account uh, the Winograd report, the state comptroller's report on Olmert and his rock-bottom popularity. Do you really think he, he, he will make such a move which may well may be unpopular in the Israeli public? As Yoni said, it's not easy for, a, for a, any Israeli prime minister. It's not easy for a, particularly not easy for an extremely weak Israeli pr prime minister. That doesn't, uh, doesn't mean that he shouldn't be trying because, I mean, I, I think Ayod Ahmed, for instance, he, he produced the most revolutionary statement in 40 years in Israeli political thinking when he said, prior to when Ariel Sharon even went ahead and, and, and pulled Israel out of, out of Gaza, he said, the time has come, no longer are we waiting around and saying, oh, whether the Arabs really want to make peace, whether Assad is offering this or that. We will decide what's in our national interest, what, is go what are going to be our borders, what, are, what is the Israel for which we will fight, for which we will uh, battle on every front. He abandoned that in the wake of the uh, Lebanon war. There's no reason he should have, quite frankly. He can still revive it. I think the problem is that uh, as a result of the Lebanese uh, war, Israeli-Lebanese war, and also the Israeli withdrawal from Le South Lebanon in 2000, and also we're talking now about two years for disengagement mm -hmm. from Gaza. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that uh, the lesson that Israel, Israel learned, or maybe the Israeli public, learned is that unilateral steps are not necessarily a, a good thing for Israel. Uh, it looked like this in the beginning. This is what Ehud Barak did in South Lebanon. This is what Olmed did and Sharon did in, the, in, in Gaza. But uh, it didn't serve the purpose of peace. Uh, the, the outcome was very, very uh, bad for Israel. I think everybody understands that now. Bashar Assad might be a good partner, a good address. And we should try the, this track now uh, because we cannot sit still and just wait for something to happen and, and not look for peace. We have to be, take the initiative into our own hands and now try and, and reach something with the Syrians, at least the resumption of the good negotiations. Do you think Olmert will make such an effort or play it safe and sort of wait I think till Olmert the end is of very, his term? I think Olmert is very serious uh, in his uh, efforts to try and resume the negotiation with Syria. It's just is looking for a start as something that will allow him to go into the these resumptions of talks but uh, the, the problem is that uh, so far we didn't get any any sign from the Syrians as far as I know and I'm updated um, we didn't get any positive signs from the Syrians that they really mean business uh, maybe maybe the, the Turks will, will succeed in the mediation maybe it will happen in a few weeks or in a few months but I'm sure that once it will happen Israel will be very serious about it. And the Israeli public, you convinced that even a government as weak as, as the present one would be able to convince the Israeli public of, a, of the merits of a, say, a I think I think that uh, I think it's a good timing now to say to the Israeli public, and they maybe will accept it, if, if we will not talk about the concessions and say, look, we're going to give up the whole Golan Heights, we don't, and the Israeli public doesn't know what is the price for it. So I think just to come out and say to the Israeli public, look, we want to try this track and we have to, to do something for peace and let's try now the Syrians, I think the Israeli public will accept it. I think they will. Thank you very much, Yoni Ben Menachem, Gerald Kessel. Thank you.